Welcome back to Green Tech Live after a short break. So we have a guest from San Francisco or from Silicon Valley, Nirav Patel. Nirav, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you so much for joining our call and uh, using our, our virtual screensaver or, or background. <laughs> and I really appreciate that you use this one because this is my personal favorite. And most of the folks actually so far, they use this. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, it's a great photo. Where are you actually <laughs> connecting from? From, from, from the Valley? Yeah, from San Francisco. So. Amazing. Amazing city, my favorite city. Yours as well? Wolfgang? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have met we have met during the call last week for the first time. Today we 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 want to introduce you to the folks out there that are watching and we want to learn a lot about your your yeah, sustainable laptops framework. Um, have you ever used one of the one of, one of his machines? Not yet. I think Martin, uh, I, I, our our colleague. Yeah, here, Ma right? Martin has, I think. Yeah. Um, yes, but we have some uh, similar projects uh, in Germany. We, we, we may talk about that later on. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Do you do you have a presentation to share, Nirav? I do. Let me yes. go ahead and pull that up. Uh, let's see. How is that? Yeah. I can I can see your your logo. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yep. That's the first slide. Okay. So this is your show then, please, Nirav. Sure. Yeah. So I can uh, share a bit about framework and really what I want to dig into is the mission that we have here, which is to remake consumer electronics to respect people and the planet. And I kind of just want to go through why we believe that's even possible to do and then how we're actually gonna go and do it. And so ultimately the thing that we're solving is that the incentives in consumer electronics are basically revolve around disposability. Uh, this idea that as a company making consumer electronics products, the thing that you wanna do most is maximize the number of new products that you manufacture and sell. And the result of this ultimately is that consumers who are buying these products are buying them in a mode of disposability. They're buying a new product, using it for some period of time, having some part of it wear out or go out of date or break, and then be forced to dispose of it either you know, informally in, a, in our drawer of dead devices that we all have, or sending it out into a landfill or you know, ideally recycling. Uh, but ultimately that end-to-end -end flow comes back to this idea that these products are designed to be these one-off items that you use and then dispose of. And so what we're doing instead in framework is kind of flipping the model over entirely. And so instead of optimizing on the number of new products sold, we optimize for the number of people who can actively and happily be using that product. And in doing so, we actually align the incentives around longevity. So for us, the optimization is on maximizing that install base. For consumers, they get products that when they buy that product, they have the ability to continue using it actively as part of that install base. And then ultimately we enable that longevity and facilitate that longevity through a marketplace where consumers can get access to the parts and upgrades and accessories they need to be able to keep using that product for longer. And we do all of that really by designing the product from the outset to, instead of being this one-off disposable object, be basically a vessel for modules that can be interchanged over time as needed by that consumer for them to be able to keep using that product for as long as they'd like to. And so the first product that we brought this model into is the framework laptop, which we launched in mid 2021 and has gotten a fantastic response. But what you can see here is that we set sort of table stakes requirements that modularity was not going to trade off against the key things that people look for today in their consumer electronics products. And so from the outset, we you know, sort of knew that people, when they hear the word modularity or hear repairability, they think this is going to be some you know, monstrous product, something that's you know, two inches thick or I guess uh, five centimeters thick and uh, you know, weighs a lot. Um, and so we decided that the table stakes requirements were that it has to be as thin, as light, as seamless looking, and as high performance as the products that people would buy today in that category. And so the, Mac, or the, the framework laptop is actually almost exactly the same thickness and weight as a 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is you know, among the, the top products in the category. Uh, and similarly, we wanted to make sure that 
consumers don't have to pay a premium for longevity. We knew that that sort of delayed gratification around having a product that lasts longer and you know, perhaps ultimately saves that consumer money is a hard thing to swallow at purchase time, especially if you're buying a product from a, a startup that you know, has only been around for a couple of years at this point. And so we wanted to make sure that that initial purchase price was also equivalent to what a consumer would buy another similar product for. Um, and then ultimately around all of that, we of course needed to sort of uh, guarantee that we have this ecosystem of parts and modules available for consumers. Uh, and so, uh, you know, looking at this, uh, at this product, you can see in this image, we have um, sort of a spread of, uh, of some of the core modules. So the main board itself, the keyboard, which is customizable, um, you know, common things that wear out like the, the fan assembly, along with things that are common upgrades for consumers like memory and storage. We also have this sort of unique system that we've built um, as, as part of this overall idea that, uh, you know, it's ultimately your product and you should be able to customize it the way that you'd like to. Uh, so, you know, one common issue that we found in, in notebooks today is that everyone needs a different set of ports on their computer, but in reality, the ports are fixed by the company that designs the product. And so as a result, we all carry around these adapters and dongles. And you know, over time, over you know, course of years, as you collect different peripherals that you need to plug in, you end up with this you know, sort of crazy spread of different modules and adapters just to make the product do what you'd like it to do. And so instead, what we've done is actually build what we call an expansion card system, where all the ports on the machine are actually these little modules that plug in on the left and right side of the system. And consumers can actually choose at order time which ports they want, and then be able to swap them at any point after that. And that again, all maps back to this idea that once you buy that product, it's really yours to do what you'd like with and yours to adapt to continue to meet your needs as opposed to you know, perhaps needing to go and buy a whole new product. Uh, and so then as we think about um, that, this idea of longevity and making this actually work as a business model, it ultimately kind of comes back to this idea of network effects. And if you're not familiar with network effects, it's this idea that you can have you know, a multi-sided ecosystem where increasing the number of participants on one side of that ecosystem benefits the participants on the other side, and that increasing that number benefits that first group. And so you basically get this flywheel going where you can get a healthy ecosystem um, that is sort of growing and sustaining on its own. And you see this a lot in the software world, actually, with things like app stores or even you know, game consoles or game libraries where the more consumers you have and install based on, let's say, you know, Android or iOS, the more it makes sense for a developer to look at that and say, it makes sense for us to build a piece of content or a game for this install base. And then the richer variety there is of that content of games or applications, the more interesting it is for consumers and you know, that attracts more consumers into that install base. So we're actually kind of bringing the same concept into the hardware space itself where with the framework laptop, as we grow that install base from you know, the tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions, it gets more and more interesting, not just for us, but actually for third parties and for community members to be able to develop new hardware, new modules, to be able to extend that, uh, that ecosystem around the framework laptop or future product categories, which then enriches that experience for consumers and makes it more interesting for that install base to be supported and grown. Um, and so if you look at the expansion card system, for example, if we've actually released the design files for expansion cards publicly on GitHub so that community members or businesses can actually take those designs and develop their own cards. And because that expansion card is a relatively simple device, that's something that actually requires a relatively small install base to be able to get a return on that investment of developing a new card. Um, but then as we grow that ecosystem or grow that install base over time, we get to a place where even something very complex like a main board is something that a third party can develop, release into that install base and get a return on. And so we've really sort of built this business model around longevity and enabled longevity through a pretty unique business model in the hardware space. Um, and then if we look a little bit into this idea of designing for longevity in the product itself, um, you can see this kind of uh, top-down shot of the laptop itself folded open with the input cover removed. So that keyboard and trackpad and fingerprint reader removed. And you can see the internals of the device. And we've kind of laid it out in this way that it's actually really accessible, even for someone who's never been inside of a consumer electronics product before. And so, for example, you can see that 
every module in the system actually has a QR code on it that you can scan to take you right back into that marketplace to get a replacement part or see instructions. And in the future, even be able to resell an item that you're not using anymore so that it doesn't have to sit in a drawer. And all of this, again, goes back to this idea of fostering an ecosystem and a marketplace rather than just a series of one-off items. And we've also ensured that the modules that we're building are ones that we're going to carry forward over an extended period of time. And so that mainboard, for example, for you know multiple generations of CPUs that are available, will keep that same form factor so that someone who buys the product today has the ability to come back to that marketplace in the future and get a form factor and interface compatible module to drop in. And similarly, because we're keeping these designs common, it allows for some interesting opportunities to reuse modules themselves as opposed to those modules going into a drawer or out into a landfill. So for example, that mainboard, again, if it's been upgraded to a new version, a consumer can actually take that old mainboard and use it for something else, like even putting it inside of a small case and using it as a, a little standalone PC to you know, plug into, let's say, you know, an arcade machine or a TV or some other interesting application. Um, and again, everything maps back to this idea of, uh, of an ecosystem instead of a one-off product. And if you want more information on any of this, uh, our website is frame.work. Uh, the product's actually available today uh, for pre-order in uh, Germany, France, and the UK, and is shipping currently as well in uh, the US and Canada. And that is everything that I wanted to share in terms of slides, but absolutely ha happy to answer any questions about framework or the framework laptop or our product philosophy. Thank you so much, Nirav. Great presentation. So inspiring product, inspiring story. So overall, I'm, I'm curious because we had um, uh, have a number of companies on our conference that actually have an, a similar approach. So uh, we had shift phones. You might know Carson. We had iFixit, for example, here. And of course, we all know Fairphone, uh, close friends in, in, in Holland. Um, so overall, I'm, I'm curious if you guys actually, because you, 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 you're, um, you're feeding the same cause. And so do you, do you um, cooperate, do you network, do you actually exchange technology insights and, and, and information? Because again, you're, you're, you're on the same side here and, and, and the, the competition is the, the big tech guys. So overall, uh, I'm sure Karsten will be watching this and he, he wanted that. We, we were planning a, a panel, it, it couldn't, didn't work out, but um, for uh, timing reasons, not for, 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 for content reasons. So overall, I'm curious to learn what the overall, the overall uh, thing is you have with other companies and where you differentiate, how you cooperate and where you're going. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, actually Kyle at iFixit is the, the first person I believe that we talked to as a, as a company before we were in technically formed uh, back in uh, the fall of 2019. Um, and so we definitely bounce around ideas around the industry in ways that we can uh, cooperate and collaborate. Um, and similarly for the folks at Fairphone, we've talked about ways to potentially leverage uh, basically supply chain efficiencies, where if we can you know, find a common supplier and sort of use our combined volume um, you know, maybe we can improve material selection or develop new, more sustainable materials. Uh, and I think that's that's something that we can always continue to do as a, as a group together trying to advance this industry. So the, the network is pretty global, yeah? And and for me, I try to understand if you see your, 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 your laptops as a global product or do you see more, let's say, demand in, let's say, more developed countries? Because in, in terms of... Um, how to say invest and in performance, maybe these laptops are not for everyone. So overall, I try to understand the way you see your key markets for the product. Yeah, absolutely. We do see this as global and we've been very deliberate about designing the product to work globally, both in terms of certifications and uh, you know, for laptops, especially keyboard languages, making sure that we have a broad variety that we're able to continue to grow. Um, and it does sort of work, you know, sort of uniquely in our advantage, where if we were a traditional consumer electronics company and we were, you know, resetting our product every year or two and, you know, redoing the design entirely, it would get really hard to actually develop, um, you know, regionalized versions for different languages or power adapters and so on. Uh, but by keeping that design stable and that architecture stable for an extended period of time, it lets us year over year continue to grow our reach and enter new markets with that same product.
Wolfgang, I'm sure you have yeah, technical have questions. questions. For, for um, for first of all, uh, uh, compliments. I, 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 I find your approach very convincing, and um, it's it's really worthwhile to to continue this um, and even to go into many many more countries uh, you know, with your ideas and your products. Um, uh, well, yes. Um, if you go uh, to the uh, global markets of, 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 of components, uh, do you get the same pricings as all the, the, the big companies do, or do you, do you have to pay more? And, and so uh, what does it mean for, for your price points? Is it, uh, does it affect your price points also a little, in a, a little bit, or how's, how? Sure, sure. Are? Yeah, you know, that's always the tough thing about being a startup. You can't leverage the same volumes that larger companies take advantage of. But in the same way, you're not saddled by the same business models. And so one advantage that we have is that we don't go through retail channel. So the retailers are not taking, you know, a substantial chunk of margin. We go directly to consumers and we actually do that deliberately because we want to make sure that that place that that consumer buys the product from, which is directly from us through a marketplace, is also the place they can go back to to get any modules or upgrades they need in the future, mm -hmm. rather than going through retail where we'd have to you know, sort of fight to get every new module listed through that same channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and so with that, we kind of balance out by you know, not having necessarily the same volume pricing that uh, you know, a bigger OEM would have, but we have a more efficient channel to get to that consumer. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the reasons why uh, the, the big companies uh, don't make their, uh, their notebooks uh, repairable or so is they say, we have to glue things and, and we don't uh, use screws and all that uh, because uh, our notebooks uh, should look very elegant and they should be very lightweight and so um but uh, obviously it's, it's it's not the truth or it's only part of the truth uh, because uh, obviously uh, you prove that that uh, a notebook can look elegant and can also be repairable and and, and consists of of uh, exchangeable uh, components is that right <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, I think uh, consumers or, you know, sort of all of us would be, uh, you know, maybe shocked actually by how small the trade-offs are to make a product more repairable and upgradable. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly we could have made the product fractions of a millimeter thinner or, yeah. you know, grams lighter by, by, you know, gluing everything together or soldering it down instead of making it socketed. But we don't think that's the right trade-off and we believe consumers don't think that's the right trade-off either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... I'm curious to hear your, your founder story, Niraz. Yeah. So you're a techie, uh, I'm sure. You're a uh, Linux advocate, I, I assume. Because I, I assume the machine run, they run Linux. They don't run either Windows or iOS, is that correct? Uh, so we actually have both a pre-built version that has Windows preloaded, because that's just you know, the bulk of the, the notebook market. We also have what we call the DIY edition, which doesn't have an OS preloaded on it that you can actually bring your own uh, you know, preferred distro to, and we do testing across a variety of the most popular Linux distros. Okay, so so again, I, I, as I as I just started, um, you're a, you're a techie, but also are you a tree hugger? Because how did you get in that space to found a company uh, or uh, you run a company that that uh, is in that field? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'd say you know this really is at that intersection of you know wanting this, wanting to own tech, basically. I, I mean, as a consumer, wanting to buy technology products that I feel that I can actually own and use the way I want to, and seeing that there, you know, there are a broad range of consumers who have that same feeling. And similarly, you know, consumers, especially younger uh, consumers um, or younger people generally. Um, you know, becoming increasingly aware of the, the risks and the damage environmentally caused, uh, you know, caused by these industries yeah. like consumer electronics, especially. And so, you know, for me, I, I do come from both of those worlds and, and building framework is at the intersection of it. You have a question for Nirav? Um, yeah, um, I think it's, it's all on your website, but um, uh, I'm... I, I didn't know I don't know by heart. So, um, how's how's the pricing in, in comparison to 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 other uh, comparable notebooks, technic te technic wise comparable notebooks? Yeah, we actually really deliberately looked at where the market is. You know, especially uh, some of the key premium products like uh, you know a Dell XPS or uh, you know a, a Lenovo ThinkPad, and made sure that our pricing was either equivalent or better for the same specs. We don't. We yeah. definitely don't want to be in a place where consumers mm -hmm. are uh, are you know paying that premium for longevity. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned Dell or, or, or other uh, laptop brands. So I'm curious to learn: uh, Do you talk to these guys? Do they take notice that you are out there? Yeah. Uh, they fight you, or they love you, or they <laughs> hug you? What's the relationship oh, with the sure. big tech company? <laughs> Yeah, we've gotten definitely a lot of, uh, of sort of arm's length interest, I would say, from uh, from companies, you know, especially companies, th these larger companies, of course, have, uh, you know, sustainability teams, they have sustainability initiatives, I think that are oftentimes, uh, you know, sort of hamstrung by the actual business objectives of those companies. But we do talk with the people in those roles in these companies and sort of hear how they're, uh, you know, pushing the ways that they can, which is often, you know, finding more uh, you know, recyclable packaging or reducing shipment weight and so on. Um, and, and there are places, of course, even there that we can align and, and cooperate as an industry. Mm -hmm. Wolfgang. Um, yeah. Um, uh, you, were, you were talking about uh, your, your uh, business model. Um, did I get it right that uh, you, you yeah, your aim is uh, to uh, to create a sort of community that develops um, interchangeable uh, interchangeable um, components like uh, main boards or something. Is that right? Um, yeah, that's absolutely it. And so for the expansion cards, we've launched what we call the expansion card development program, yeah. uh, which is that you know GitHub repository of. Uh, of you know reference designs and CAD for the system, but also a community forum where people who are tinkering with these designs and developing their cards can come and talk to each other and talk with us and get ideas and get feedback. We've seen actually a lot of interesting development really quickly. There are a few pretty impressive designs mm -hmm. that uh, that we've seen posted already. There's someone actually developing uh, an LT radio card, which is you know much more advanced mm -hmm. than we expected mm -hmm. to see out of a community member this early. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've also seen a range of other interesting mm -hmm. designs. I, I guess this uh, also includes a lot of uh, uh, software engineering, isn't it? Uh, I mean, um, you, you need uh, driving units, you need software that fits to 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 uh, uh, hardware components, and so. Uh, are there uh, certain divisions uh, in your in your company that deal more for hardware and, and others more for software? How? How does your, your company work then? Yeah, definitely. And actually, part of the reason that we chose notebooks as our first product category yeah. of, you know, in the future among many categories um, is that there's such a rich and robust software ecosystem that we can plug into that mm -hmm. already exists. So, of course, you know, there is the mm -hmm. whole ecosystem around Windows and also the whole ecosystem around various Linux distributions. Mm -hmm. Um, and between those two, we get to serve a lot of consumers' needs without needing to develop a lot of user-facing software. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is a lot of innovation in the firmware and, and BIOS level mm -hmm. um, to you know, enable the modularity that we have here. Um, but when it comes to software, we get to leverage those ecosystems and then ourselves focus mostly mm -hmm. on developing the hardware side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the future, of course, there will be categories where we have to develop, you mm -hmm. know, sort of co-develop that software ecosystem and the hardware ecosystem together. And then we'll need to grow more on the software side here. Yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. So, so overall, the big question is what, what's next? You mentioned other product categories. Sure. <laughs> uh, we, we, we could guess, uh, laptops, phones. Yeah. Anything else? I'm not sure if you want to reveal yeah. something here, but yeah. overall, we can just guess. And laptop, yeah. laptop sure. can be yeah. a, a nice start, but there's a lot of other yeah. products out there. Yeah. You want to give a little bit of a hint? Yeah, I, I, I can't give any specifics, but I'll just share a little bit about the philosophy of how we pick categories. Uh, so it really is, we, you know, we want to go into these very robust, mature categories that have sizable markets behind them, but have these products that are stuck in this disposable model. Basically, we want to solve the, the categories that are causing the most consumer pain and the most environmental damage. And so notebooks was, of course, a very clear mm -hmm. one to enter. Um, and what we also look for is actually categories that have a sort of enthusiast uh, audience that we can bootstrap off of, you know, that person who looks at a single image of the product or a couple of, you know, sentences of text of that product, and it clicks immediately why it's something that matters and why it's something that's interesting to them. And so, you know, just from each of the images that were in my presentation, for example, like someone who's a PC enthusiast, enthusiast looks at that and so, and, you know, immediately thinks like, oh, that's exciting. I want to know what that is. Um, and that's great for us because we get to grow off of that audience. We get to serve their needs immediately. 
And we get to kind of build on top of them to reach these larger audiences. And of course, as we do that and reach these larger audiences, that also benefits those early adopters because now that larger install base enables that creation of more modules and upgrades and so on. Very interesting. Did you, while watching Nirav's presentation, did you did you recognize any of the specific details or, or components? Um, now, no, I just I just uh, had a, a, an idea uh, when you talk about the the, the community. Uh, do you think the community could grow in a way as, uh, for instance, the Linux uh, community had had grown in in the software business? Is is that something you can imagine, or is it is it a little bit keen to to have these ideas? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree that that's um, you know that's a core inspiration. Uh, you know, Linux or even just general open source software communities, where that 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 you know richness of that community really enables the growth of that product itself. That's absolutely something that we want to plug into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we look great. at your your roadmap, or maybe you want to share something. Uh, you're available in Europe. You're available in the U.S. So. Where do you see your, your, your major markets in terms of demand and, 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 and opportunities? Yeah, sure. And so we've actually also just recently opened pre-orders in uh, the Netherlands, Austria, and Ireland as well. Um, but we do, we're basically going in a sequence of countries that have, um, you know, large install bases of PC users, oftentimes large install bases of Linux users or Linux enthusiasts. Um, and then also, of course, just based on, you know, feasibility being a, a, you know, a small company having, you know, limited resourcing, we have to be really careful about that sequencing and making sure that we're picking countries that have, you know, sort of uh, lower barriers to entry just in terms of like the actual logistical effort to enter a country. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you have local distributors or do you actually sell and, and, and distribute through your website exclusively or you have specific shops or stores? Is there any idea? what your plan is for the future? Yeah, sure. So we are 100% direct to consumer through our website. And of course, on the back end of that, we work very closely with a lot of logistics mm -hmm. partners. We actually have a, a service and repair center based in Germany that we work with um, and we leverage for, uh, for repair work when needed. Um, but other than that, we really do aim to serve com consumers as directly as we can. And in the future, that's not to say we, you know, we'll never have, you know, um, uh, you know, entry points into local physical stores or, or distributors, but in the near term, we're really focused on building that direct relationship with the consumer. Maybe a store concept could be something that would even break, bring more attention mm -hmm. to, let's say, the eco-friendly laptop. And I'm, I'm sure it's, it's, it's a lot about, let's say, PR and, and marketing in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you target, let's say, enthusiasts, that's a, that's a big yeah. market, but on yeah. the other hand, why can't we help all together to 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 bring more wow into into let's say echo uh, laptops or or any other products so mm -hmm. we're we'll we're happy to help and discuss yeah. ideas yeah yeah absolutely and and you're right that you know that sequence from um you know pc enthusiasts into you know the further mainstream somewhere in between those two are people who are strongly passionate about the environment and want to reduce their environmental footprint. Mm -hmm. And that's an audience that we really, um, you know, are excited about and want to reach out to. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Niraf, thank you so much thank for you. joining our conference. This is pretty much it. So we'll, we'll share information uh, with all the other speakers and uh, we'll, we'll be happy to connect you with, with any other uh, startup entrepreneurs or people that are in, interested in this field. Mm -hmm. And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thanks, it's great being here.